I love every place we go, but Puerto Rico has a special place in my heart. Number one, this is my second trip there. First one went amazing last year. It was one of my first big clinics and it worked out crazy well. Got to know a lot of people, got to see some cool things. Overall, great experience. But now since it's that second time, there's a little bit of pressure to make it even better. But to me, that's why I work my butt off to make sure I'm learning and that each year the experience only gets better. And the second reason I love Puerto Rico is because it truly gets me outside of my comfort zone. One of my biggest goals is to speak Spanish fluently by the end of 2023. But if you've ever learned a language, you know that number one, it's way easier to learn and pick up on the real language when you're immersed in it. And number two, it's scary as hell when you speak to natives sometimes because frankly, you probably suck at it. And that's how I felt the entire weekend, but it was needed, much needed. I've been speaking and studying Spanish in Miami for a while now, but it's always needed to take it to that next level. So this is how our weekend growing the game in Puerto Rico went. So like I mentioned, this is my second time here for a camp. So I've seen a lot of the sightseeing stuff. This trip was more about really diving into the culture and to everyone outside of that just typical sightseeing stuff. And to be honest, Puerto Rico is a lot like Miami, just without the high blood pressure that you get from living in the 305. It's way more relaxed, the people are just cool. So this is pretty much hopping straight off the plane and heading to the gym. Same gym we did it at last year, which was cool because I know they would bring the same level of energy and excitement that we had last year. And I definitely wasn't wrong about that. Hey, 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 hey. Yep, two, three. Any move that you want, but I'm going as fast as I can down. There we go, there we go. No, not now. <laughs> I'm going this way, all right, and I just shoot a floater, boom, probably blocking it, all right? Now, two things that I could do, and I mentioned this a little bit earlier. Number one, I can even go out this way and then take this angle, all right? So now I have some space from him. So it could be here, and then now creating this space, or what it could be, one more time, is I could go and then try to get here, and now I'm in front of him, and it's a lot easier to put up that floater. All right, so try to maybe take this angle this way or get in front of him instead of just letting him be here and blocking that shot. Make sense? All right, let's go. Two more minutes here, then we'll get some water. Let's go. Good defense. Yeah, there we go. That's good, though. Thank you, guys. Again, um, I'm very grateful. <laughs> so finish that camp get something to eat it's about 11 almost midnight next thing you know next morning we right back at it Yes, sir. Yeah. 
Now the interesting thing about this trip is that we're making stops at different parts of the island. So the first stop was in the north, then we're heading to the west of the island early in the morning, then we're going south and then to the east. So we're doing four camps in pretty much 48 hours, which is a grind for sure, but it's all part of the journey. Plus it gives us more exposure to athletes, more experience, more chances to try to speak Spanish at least. And what else can you ask for when you're in a foreign place trying to make an impact through basketball? One thing I'm constantly reminded, whether it's Europe, whether it's Puerto Rico, is that in the States, we're so blessed to have the facilities that we have. And this is mainly just because basketball is more advanced, it's been around for longer. But I think we take for granted the facilities that we have in any city. Got horses. Pajaros. Una cucaracha grande, gigante. Sí, puede volar. Debo matarlo. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stomp it, and it's just gonna put its arm out or its wings out and say, "Yo, yo, chill, chill, chill." So here we have the owner of the gym, uh, Mr. Cockroach. Sir, uh, thank you for letting us in your gym today. Oh shit, hell no. That thing moving fast, man. Oh <laughs> no, it's about to fly away. Mira, mira, mira. Hey, there we go. Yeah, we'll be passing it to each other. Whenever I shoot, he can go put a hand up or even try to block the shot. Estamos trabajando, hace caliente, estamos sudando. Yes, sir. Todo está bien. Perfect, gracias. <laughs> 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 That's crazy, bro. I've never seen anything like that. <laughs> That's crazy. That's nasty work right there. That is foul. <laughs> I don't know how they're still alive. Bro, imagine if you take that, you feel taking that and then hooping. <laughs> Bro, you would add like five miles per hour. You're adding five miles per hour to your top speed. <laughs> so after we finished up that clinic, we headed to another one. Not really gonna show that one because you guys are gonna be tired of seeing all the camps we did this weekend. But it was cool to kind of drive around with my guys, see the entire island, and just overall have fun doing what we love. Next morning, same thing. Get up around 4.30 again, but this time we're heading to one of the Coliseums, so where the pro teams play. This is an interesting environment for a camp, and I've honestly never done one in kind of arena like this, but if you're doing a camp, this is a great place to do it. Three, I'm dribbling. He's trying to reach in and touch my chest. It Get off me. There we go. Alright, let's go. <laughs> there you go. Alright, so really try to smack the ball out. He's dribbling here. I'm trying to get around him. Yep, he's holding me off. I'm trying to get to that ball. Oh. So slap his face. Yo, he said, Ahí, bro, deja la bola. Como se dice, chest. Yeah, I already knew that. 
I know all this shit, bro. I just nah. be scared to say that shit. The next camp we do here, it's gonna be on spin. Obviously on the way to the airport, gotta stop and do a little bit of sightseeing at least. Kill some time in downtown San Juan and just kind of talk and recap the experience. Puerto Rico, <laughs> Rico ice cream. <laughs> yeah. I think for me, even spending 48 hours in a place like this is unbelievably valuable. Whether it's the language and working through language barriers. And again, it's not me trying to get them to understand English, because most of them do. It's more so about me working into their language and working into their culture. Because who am I to come into somebody else's city, speak my language, and expect that to be how we do it? If I'm coming into somebody else's environment, I'm doing my absolute best to play into their culture. Which is again, one reason why I really, really want to speak Spanish so fluently because we can reach even more athletes and coaches and whoever on a really personable and genuine level. So it was tough. I mean, I told people to speak to me in Spanish a lot of the time. I didn't understand. I'm definitely getting there and I feel like I could do a camp next time fully in Spanish. And I honestly see language a lot like basketball in terms of how we train it and learn it. But that's a story for another time. But in the meantime, I'll be doing my research. I'll be trying to apply all the things that I teach in basketball into how I learn a language. So stay tuned for that. Next thing you know, I'm gonna come out here talking straight Spanish. I'm kidding, we'll see about that. But overall, again, very valuable lessons all around. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. Make sure to follow me on Instagram for more like this and stay tuned for more Grow the Game videos like this. Our mission is to go to different countries, different cities, build that basketball culture up as much as we possibly can so we can make basketball the number one sport in the world and give everyone opportunities through basketball. Thanks for tuning in.